I don't know that they were. They could have been from the Lord. But whether they are or whether they aren't, one thing I know is true, the Word of God. And the Word of God has already prophesied the destruction of this world and the fall of Babylon. Right now, America and the Luciferian elite who run this country and the satanic principalities behind them are doing everything in their power to put us in World War III with Russia and China. Now, all of these visions were about nuclear explosions happening all over America. But it just so happens that right now, Russia, Vladimir Putin, is threatening, he's not just threatening, he's promising that if the Ukrainian government, if Ukraine joins NATO, or if NATO or the United States goes into Ukraine or tries to stop them in any way, Vladimir Putin said this. He said they will start a war that no one will win. He said that will start a war that will have no victors. You know what that means? Nuclear war. The only war that has no winners is one in which it destroys the world. Well, that is exactly what we see in the book of Revelation. Now, the book of Revelation prophesies the fall of Babylon. And who in this world today represents Babylon more than the United States of America. No one. The U.S. is, for all intents and purposes, the Babylon of our age. And right now, those in power in this government are Luciferian to the core. They want this war to happen. You say, well, Pastor, why would they want the war to happen? That would destroy them too. No, you don't understand. They want the destruction of America. They don't care about America. They want the world government. They have a leader that they are ready to rise in power. They're trying to establish a one world government. And in order for that one world government to come into power, and in order for that one world leader to come into power, America must fall. It must fall financially, and it must fall literally. So friends, I don't say this to scare you unless you are not in Christ Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you should be scared to death. And quite frankly, I hope I scared the hell out of you today. Because if you will come to Jesus, then you don't have to worry about hell any longer. In Revelation chapter 18, we see a woman, well, in Revelation chapter 17, we see a woman arrayed in purple. It says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and he talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. 
and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Now, I want to ask you a question. I know a lot of people that I talk to believe that, that, that we're going to be raptured out of the world before the tribulation period. They don't believe that the church is going to be in the tribulation that they're going to be taken out of the earth and you know when i talk to people like that i tell them look i pray that you're right i hope you're right but the thing is the scriptures really show something very different and i have to prepare according to what the scriptures so say so what I'll do is I will hope you're right, but prepare for the inevitability that you're wrong. And we see here that, that the saints of God have been killed by this woman. She's drunk of the blood of the saints. And the martyrs of Jesus. Who else can be the saints and the martyrs of Jesus other than you and I, those who are in Jesus? The book of Revelation is written to a specific audience, friends. The book of Revelation is the book on the end time it's the book on the tribulation and it is written to a specific audience you know who the book of revelation is written to it's written to the church jesus went out of his way to write a book get john to write a book specifically showing everything that will happen in the end times to the church so that we can prepare. And not only that, but he attached a blessing and a curse to it. This is the only book of the Bible that has a special blessing attached to it for those who read it and keep it. And it also has a curse attached to it for anyone that would take away from it or change it. So this book is written to the church. The book would not be written to the church if the church was not in these events. Now, another thing. A lot of people believe that Revelation is a book about the tribulation or a book about the Antichrist or a book about this or that. It's about one thing, and it's in the name. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, the apocalypse of Jesus Christ, the revealing of Jesus Christ, the unveiling of of Jesus Christ. This book is about Jesus and Jesus alone. And without Jesus Christ, there is no reconciliation to the Father. 
when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, we lost our birthright and right then we were cursed, all mankind from that time forward was cursed with death. We all must die. The Bible says it is appointed unto every man once to die, then the judgment. But because of what Jesus Christ did, God sent his only begotten son to this world to die for our sins so that we might have reconciliation with the Father, undoing the curse of death that came from the garden, from what Adam and Eve did in the garden, what Jesus did broke that curse, and all we have to do to take part in the unbreaking of that curse and have our birthright back as sons and daughters of the Most High is to accept Jesus Christ, to come to Jesus Christ, worship Him, repent of your sins. The Bible says, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. We must be born again of God and of spirit. Every man is born of love. Every man, woman, and child, we are all born of our mothers in water. But the Bible says you must be born again of the Spirit. When you're born again and accept Jesus Christ by confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believing in your heart that the Spirit of God, God the Father, raised Him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. Then, to show your faith, to proclaim your faith, to profess it, you are then baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. That filling of the Holy Spirit marks you in your forehead until the day of judgment. You are literally marked the same as those who reject Jesus Christ and accept the mark of the beast will be marked in their foreheads. Those who accept Jesus Christ are sealed unto the day of redemption in their foreheads by the Holy Spirit. And it's through that sealing that we are protected. We see that in the book of Revelation. When these demonic chimera creatures come upon the earth, they attack everything and every no, they, they attack everyone. They're told not to hurt the trees, the grass, the living green things. Only those who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Friends, you and I have the seal of God in our foreheads. We have been sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, I believe wholeheartedly that America is Babylon. And I don't mean the mystery Babylon that is the end time one world religion. I mean that great city Babylon that it talks about in Revelation 18. Now, Revelation 18 says the merchants of these things were made of rich by her who were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches has come to nothing. And every shipmaster and all company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar 
and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and he cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft here be shall, found, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Who's the bridegroom and the bride, my friends? Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. And at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we will become his bride. He's the bridegroom and we will be the bride. Amen? Hallelujah says, no more shall the bridegroom nor the bride be found any more. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, I want to say this. To me, it's very clear that the city that is being talked about here is Jerusalem. I know it's Jerusalem. However, over the last 100 years, 200 years, America has been seen by the world as a type of Jerusalem. America has been the place where the bride has been. Christianity has been in America more than any other place in the world. And as much as I flat out despise what has become of American evangelical Christianity, I nor no one else can deny the fact that if it was not for America, the gospel would not have been spread throughout the world the way it has been. So there were things and there has been things that God has used America for. So when I call America Babylon, it doesn't mean that I think that America is literally the city that is being talked about here. But it is a type. And what is one thing we know, friends? We know that America and Israel stand like this. America put our embassy where? In Jerusalem, that great city Babylon. We know it's Jerusalem because it tells us right here in verse 24. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. What did Jesus say to the Pharisees? He said, Upon you lay all the blood of the prophets. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Jerusalem has always been associated with Babylon and prophecy. But America can be associated with Jerusalem. Now, I live in America, and we're talking about America. 
So today, for all intents and purposes, America is heaven. You can see that. There is no greater nation as far as power and wealth on the world. There is also no greater nation in wickedness in all of the world. America, for all intents and purposes, is modern day Babylon. Friends, I mourn and I literally get sick in my spirit when I think about how the church in America, because it's only the church that I am concerned about, and that's we're talking about. But the church in America has become something other than the church. The church in America is quite literally the lay of the sea in church. Jesus said, point blank, I, I would rather you be hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. In other words, American evangelical Christianity makes Jesus sick. It's time to repent. Come back to our first love. Our first love is Jesus Christ. We must do the first works. That is, our first love is Jesus. Our first works is the gospel. We have a commitment. We were given a great commission to preach the gospel to all nations making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we don't do that. We're content to live throughout our week, come to church on Sunday, sit in the pew, open the Bible only on Sunday when the pastor tells us to, close the book, go home, and say, oh, well, I've done my Christian thing for the week. I'm done. I've done all I need to do. And then we just go on about our week. That's not Christianity. If that's the way you're living, repent because you're on your way to hell. If you do not repent, eventually you are going to become so backslidden that you literally have no more relationship with the Father. The Holy Spirit is not going to remain in a vessel, in a temple where He's not wanted. He's not going to remain in a temple filled with uncleanliness, ungodliness. We must stay in the Word of God. We must pray. We must do the first works. Come back to our first love. Revelation chapter 21 tells us Just a second. Actually, Revelation chapter 20, starting verse 10, says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, both small and great, 
stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered them up now a lot of people get confused by this because they, miss it. They, they see where Satan was just cast into the lake of fire and then they see where it says that death and hell were delivered up. Well, where it says hell here is actually talking about Hades, death, the place of death. It's not the lake of fire. It's the place of death, Hades. So a better way to read this would be and death and Hades were cast I mean excuse me and death and Hades were delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Friends, that is the second death. And that is something that is coming sooner than you realize. It breaks my heart to think about just how many right now are on their way to hell and don't know it because they honestly believe that they are on their way to heaven because they believe in God or they're on their way to heaven because they go to church or because their their mama went to church or because mama and daddy were Christians friends it doesn't matter how many of your how many times you've been to church it doesn't matter if mommy and daddy were Christians it does not matter how much good you do the only thing that matters the only thing that matters is whether or not you are in Christ Jesus whether or not Jesus knows you you know we all say we know Jesus but does Jesus know us that's what's important. And if Jesus doesn't know us, then we can say we know him, but it doesn't make any difference. Now, in Matthew chapter 20, The Word of God says this. Actually, it's in chapter 19, in verse 20. It says, The young man saith unto him, All these things Jesus has just gone through, uh, and he's told this uh, um, ooh, this rich young ruler how he asked him how he can enter heaven how he can obtain eternal life and Jesus tells him all the things that he must do and he the young man says unto Jesus he says all these things have I kept from my youth meaning the law of Moses what lack I still Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, 
Go and sell all that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard this, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all, Lord. We have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. You see, friends, it is very, very hard for this world to truly come to Jesus Christ. Here in America, here in America, we are more worried about material things. We are more worried about this life. Our best life now is what is preached from the pulpits of churches in the Word of Faith movement and the New Apostolic Reformation. Also, you have your average everyday church goers in small Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal churches, uh, you pick the denomination. You have your small town churches full of people who go to church every Sunday, but they do not obey what Jesus says to do. He says that all of those who forsake everything and follow him, you say, but pastor, how is that possible? What well, Jesus just told us. Through our own strength, it's not possible. But through God, all things are possible. We are to strive to be perfect in this life. Will we be perfect in this life? No, we'll sin. But what did we learn the last time we came together? I wasn't here last Sunday because of COVID, but Sunday before last, we learned in the book of First uh, John, that when we sin, we have an advocate, that is Christ Jesus. But we are to strive not to sin. We are to strive to be perfect and holy, the same as Jesus was perfect and holy. Now, We know more than anything that we must be born again. If you have been born again, then hallelujah, that is the first step. Now you must walk in an obedient love, faith, relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, 
how to live, how to stay in him. In the book of John, Jesus says, those who abide in me, he says, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. We have to abide in his love. And that is the only way that we will get to that judgment, that judgment seat of Christ. And we didn't go that far in Revelation because we just read the great white throne judgment. But there's also the judgment seat of Christ. And that is where the believers go, the righteous, who stand before Jesus. And, you know, Jesus will say one of two things to them. Now, I'm not saying that there's going to be lost people at the judgment seat of Christ. What I'm saying is, out of those two judgments, Jesus is going to say one thing to those in the, uh, who are believers, and he's going to say something else to those who are not. We just saw that at the great white throne judgment that all of death and Hades, everyone who's ever lived and rejected Jesus Christ stood before him or will stand before him. We saw that they were standing before him. So they're going to stand before Jesus and he is going to say, the words that every man and woman alive does not want to hear, but they're going to hear him anyway. He's going to say, depart from me, you wicked workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Friends, it's not about whether we know Jesus, but about whether Jesus knows us. When we get to the judgment seat of Christ, He's going to say the words that we all long to hear. He's going to say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, I don't know if there's a way that I can make you understand just how horrible hell is going to be, but I can do my best. If you can close your eyes and imagine a place with zero light. I don't mean like dark outside with stars and you're not being able to see in front of you good, but you can still see. I don't mean like in a dark room or you go in the bathroom and shut the door and cut the light out. That might be close, but I mean a place where there is no light. No light enters in. It's only darkness. Now, I don't know exactly how there can be a lake of fire and eternal darkness, but friends, I know it's true because the Bible says it. So imagine a place that's completely dark. You can't see, but you can hear perfectly. And all you can hear is the weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Maybe you hear someone you love who you were with in this life who maybe it's your child Maybe you rejected Jesus. Your child saw you reject Jesus, so they rejected Jesus. And now you're faith in hell forever. 
and you hear your child screaming in torment and there's nothing you can do because you are in the same torment. You can't see them, but it's your child. You know what they sound like and you hear them. As a parent who has lost a child, I think that is the best way I know to describe true torment and agony in hell. And that is something that will happen, friends. I promise you, there will be those in hell, mothers, daughters, sons and fathers, brothers and sisters, enemies, friends. Hell will be overflowing, but because it is a spiritual place, it has no borders. It cannot be full or over full. But hallelujah, the same goes for heaven. Friends, this life is not what's important. What's important is the next life to come. I know I've preached a long time, but I'm going to read one more passage of Scripture before we close. I'm going to read John chapter 15, starting in verse 1. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the heaven. Every branch, brothers and sisters, if you are in Christ Jesus, you are a branch. I am a branch. Jesus says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye bear fruit, except ye abide in me. This is Jesus talking. He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. See, told you. Jesus is the vine, we as believers are the branches. He says, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, listen, if you are a believer, a branch, and you abide not in Jesus, this is what he says. If, you, if, a, if any man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. And there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. What does that sound like to you? Just a regular old... Uh, fire to burn the flesh. No, friends, it's talking about hell. Jesus says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it will be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Now listen, this is the important part. We cannot take the ifs out of Scripture. So many people take the word if out of what Jesus says, and therefore they make up their own doctrines of men, which in truth are doctrines of demons. Jesus says in verse 10, If 
Spirit, ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my command. You say, there's a lot of people, they say, okay, well, he says, if we keep his commandments, what are his commandments? The Ten Commandments? Oh, he tells us right here, this is my command, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I call you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to thee. These things I command you, here's another one to command, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of this world, the world would love you as its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent because they know not the Father. The world does not know the Father. Those in the world have not been reconciled unto the Father because they know not Jesus the Son. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no hope for their sin. He's saying, now they have nothing to hide their sin because I have come and I have, uh, I have uncovered it. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law that they hated me without a cause. This is prophecy being fulfilled, Jesus says, when it says in the Old Testament, they hated me without a cause. Verse 26, and we're closing up. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Friends, we must, must, must be born again. We must be born again. 
out of this world, we must accept Jesus Christ. We must confess with our mouths that He is the Son of God, that He is Lord. We must believe in our hearts that when He died on the cross for our sins, that God raised Him from the dead three days later. Once we are born again, we must abide in Him, just as He says here. If we love Him, we'll keep His commandments. We must abide in the vine. He's the true vine. His Father is the husband. When we are born again, we have been reconciled to the Father, and we are once again given title and the opportunity to become sons of God. We are, we have the ability to cry out, Abba, Father. The Heavenly Father is our Father because we are sons and daughters of the Most High when we are born again. Friends, if you're not born again and you die and we're none guaranteed next breath. I could get in my car when I leave here and not make it home. I could die that fast to get hit. I've got a heart condition that I just found out uh, Friday. I, I've known I've had the heart condition since 2007, but I just found out Friday that I could literally drop dead at any time. I could have between 2007 and Friday when the doctor gave me the medicine. I could have dropped dead at any time. Only by the grace of God am I standing here today preaching His Word. Friends, we're not guaranteed another breath. Don't waste another minute. I promise you, God is real. Satan is real. Heaven is real. And friends, hell is real. When we die, there's nothing left but the judgment. And once Jesus Christ returns, once He comes again to judge, all of those who have died will come forth from the grave for the judgment. And we will either go into everlasting life or everlasting torment in the lake of fire with Satan and where the beast and the false prophet are. Friends, we are on the brink of war. And it doesn't matter where you live, you are on the brink of war because it's going to be a world war. But if you live here in America, it could start today. I'm going to be doing, and uh, I'm going to get up with Matthew Marcel, and we're going to be doing a special episode of Return of the Historic Faith on this very subject because so many need to know the truth of what's behind this and what's coming because today is the day of salvation. You can't put it off until tomorrow because you're not promised tomorrow. Friends, if any one of you that hear my voice, if you hear this sermon today, I don't care if it's today or a year from now, if you hear this and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, then He does not know you. And if you die, you will go to hell. Friends, don't waste another day. If you do not know Jesus Christ, hit your knees right now and cry out. Say, Father God, forgive me. I am a sinner. I repent of my wicked ways. I believe Jesus Christ is your Son, that you sent Him to this earth 
to die for my sins and the sins of the world. I believe in my heart, Lord, that you rose him from the dead three days later. And if you prayed that prayer honestly, earnestly, and sincerely, then go and tell somebody. Go and tell somebody. And once you do that, welcome to the family of God. After that, you must abide in Jesus Christ, the true vine. If you prayed this prayer today and you are serious, message me. Message me. I will speak with you. On Facebook, I'm Jeremy Redeemed Anderson. You can send me an email at Pastor J Anderson 2018 at gmail.com. Again, that's Pastor J Anderson 2018 at gmail.com. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now and we thank you so much for allowing us to come together today. We thank you so much for the word of God that you allowed us to hear today. Father, I thank you for giving me the words to say, hiding me behind the cross, Father. I thank you so much for your son, Jesus. Without Jesus, we would be lost. There would be no reconciliation to you and no recompense for our sins. With out shedding of blood there can be no forgiveness of sins Jesus Christ our Lord made that sacrifice his precious shed blood is the only way to cover our sins Father God I thank you for the works you are doing in the kingdom Christian assembly Father God, I thank you so much for the opportunities, the open doors. I thank you for everyone who is here today. I thank you for everyone who will see this once it's uploaded to Facebook and to YouTube, Father. Lord, I pray you grow this assembly according to your will and your will alone, not according to my will. Lord, Anything I try to do in my own strength and my own will, block it, Lord. Don't let it be. Father, anything that you want done, lead me, guide me, direct my path. Father God, I pray that you would heal all of those who are sick and need your healing. Brianna today. Lord, I thank you for all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray now and lift up the persecuted church around the world, Lord. I pray that you would allow those who need to hear this message, those who need fellowship with their brothers and sisters who live in the persecuted areas to find Kingdom Christian Assembly and be able to come and fellowship and worship and hear your word preached without having to worry about being killed or going to secret meetings. Father, there will come a time where we'll all have to meet in secret and we will all be faced with death. But Father, until that time, if you can use us to provide some protection and edification for your body. Father, I pray that you would, uh, would do that and that your will be done. Lord, I love you and I ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, I thank you so very much for coming and joining with us today. I thank you for those of you who came to hear the Word of God preached. I thank you for all of you. And, uh, you know, we have closed out the 
service, but we're still here. Um, so if anyone has anything they want to say, uh, go for it. 